So the next deal is uh, having some place to work within, um, you know, write your code and all that. And uh, I really like WebStorm, and I'm sure you could probably do this in Atom, but I'm just going to show you uh, here in WebStorm what I think is awesome. Let me grab this chair. One of the things that's really awesome. And close that. And so uh, here's the code I'm putting together. I'm just going to create a new folder and call it temp. And inside here, I'll create a file, HTML file, and temp. And then here, I'm going to do uh, a heading and my file, hello world, hello world, whatever. And, uh, and then I could uh, come into WebStorm and go into Preferences. And inside Preferences, I could come down and I'm, I'm like, where is Live Edit? Right? Where is Live Edit? Is it Live Templates? No, that doesn't look quite right. So I could do Live Edit up here in Search. And uh, oh, cool, there it is, Live Edit. So you could search up here in Preferences and it brings me to it. So I could turn on Live Edit, live edit and give it these settings right there. And once those are turned on, I could come up over here, and the first time I've done it, I won't see anything up over here, so I'll, I'll, I'll click this drop down. It'll just be a little drop down button. I choose Edit Configurations, and I create a new configuration. I make it a JavaScript debug configuration, and I give it a name, and I'm like, you know, a live, live, whatever. I call it whatever, right? Whatever I want. And oh crap, I need the URL. I forgot to get it. So uh, in here, I come up to there, and I hover over here and this magic little icon appears and I click that and it previews it in a browser so I copy that URL I come back in here and then go to edit configurations again and create my JavaScript debug and whatever and put in the URL and then I hit OK and so now when I click the debugger up here that little debugger I get live edit and so I could now if I have two monitors I could come here and as I'm working building web pages, get rid of that. As I'm working building web pages, it will show me as I change code how it changes the web page, right? And I was like, that is so awesome. <laughs> Right? Because that's what you want. You want two monitors. You want, you're working on your laptop. You're looking at your code and you're like adjusting settings and how's it changing things. You don't have to hit refresh or anything like that. So I, I really think that that's awesome. Can Adam do that? I think so. Uh, but it's, they, it's, I have to go there. Yeah, this is what we are doing all summer. We're like, you know, which is better, Adam or WebStorm? <laughs> <laughs> and the WebStorm people would talk smack on Adam, and the Adam people were very respectful and not, I don't know, low level like that. That was a joke. So, uh, so WebStorm. So here's some stuff on WebStorm, and I think we got some Adam stuff in here. And I'm just going to fly through this because you could you could learn on, learn it on your own. But and we can help you in class, and you could just go through these slides. But the first thing I do is I go into plugins. And then I want to disable all the plugins I'm not using because that slows WebStorm down. So you could just use my settings there. And then I want to get the GoLang plugin. So I download it from there. But when I come to this website, I need to show all updates like I've highlighted in the bottom right. I get the most current one. I download it. And I come back into plugins and I choose install plugin from disk. And then once I've done that, I'm ready to open up a folder where I'm going to do my work. And so, you know, in here, I'm under my workspace, which is Go. And then inside source, GitHub, Ghost 11. I have folders there, and I created a new folder called Hello just to do a sample project. I'm going to open up Hello, and then once I'm inside Hello, I could go into Preferences, and I want to make sure that my Go SDK is set to my Go root right there, user local Go. And, uh, and then I could choose themes for WebStorm, so I search for themes here, and this is how I install themes, so that tells me how to install them. But basically, I go to Import Settings, and I choose themes. So let me just show you what the themes look like. Hey, where'd you go? There we go. So you could, uh, what I want my code to look like, you could choose different themes, and that, that's what that is. So you could have your code look different ways. And uh, so you get your themes, install a theme, return to full screen, please. Import your settings. 
And then I just showed you how Live Edit works, but you got to make sure your plugin for Live Edit is turned on. And then you got to install the Chrome, uh, uh, whatever plugin, JetBrains IDE support, install that to Chrome. And then you come in there to those settings under preferences, WebStorm preferences, and you make those settings like that. And then you come up there and click that arrow, edit configurations, and do a JavaScript debug configuration. And then, oops, I forgot to get the URL. So go up there to launch this in the browser one time, get the URL, <coughs> copy it, come put it back in there. And now you're ready to click the debug, and you got the debug thing. I also find the key map really helpful in WebStorm. So under help, you have default key map reference. And uh, in that key map reference, you will see, um, you know, just basically all the shortcuts. So default key map reference, like, you know, hey, what, what do different things do? And you'll find things in there, like, you know, so if I wanted to, uh, you know, let me just find where I have some chunky code. Oh, that's not too chunky. Maybe I want to move that line. Well, now I'm, I'm moving this line up and down with my shortcut keys, right? And, uh, and so just learning how to do that stuff, the key map is really helpful for that. And so I found the key map helpful. And uh, and other things I found helpful are, you know, just like setting my right margin and using, you know, wrap when I reach from my right margin, using soft wraps and turning off code folding because I hate it. And... Uh, you know, come in and adjusting how's my HTML look and using Emmet, which is totally awesome. And, you know, showing line numbers. So right click on the gutter there and choose show line numbers. And then clicking that little icon in the lower left corner to get more options, like being able to run the terminal from right inside WebStorm. And so there's the terminal. And, and then there's also local history, which is, you know, uh, separate from GitHub stuff. So like any folder, I could just right click local history, show history, and then I could un unwind something, say like, oh, I don't want that file deleted that I deleted seven steps back in this one folder, and I'll just put that one file back. And, uh, and then, so these are all things I find helpful. Refactoring and renaming, and then finding and finding path will let me like search for a chunk of code. So let's say I, I you know, I'm like, oh, dang, how did Caleb do that thing at summer boot camp? And so whatever, I'm in the training, and uh, I go to edit, find, find and path, and then I look for, I want to find, you know, uh, FMT, that's going to be forever. Um, I want to, I want to, I want to, whatever, that's all I can think about. And then I, huh? Twitter Yeah, I'm not actually in, in that thing. So uh, anyhow, I click find, and then it shows me all the instances of FMT, you know, within whatever directory I say. And I can say, oh, let me see that code. And so I could really quickly sort of find in path. So I find that super helpful. And reformat the code is, is helpful, and comment with line comment, shortcut key, and surround with. So I have a block of code, and I'm like, dang, I need to wrap that in a div so I could use that one. And then version control, version control software, you can enable GitHub. And then you can just do all your Git commits right here. So I just say, oh, right here, hit that little up arrow. No changes were detected, dang it. And so uh, I need to just add a, a file. Hello world. I don't, I don't want to mess anything up. Here we'll go into here and just. Okay. Whatever. I'm all like, I want the code to be just right. So now I could come in here and I could say added dumb comment. And I could push that. And so that, you know, is my entire commit. And then there's the key map again, some of the options I really found. And here's Adam. And Adam's strong argument made by GitHub. That's super strong. And, uh, and you need Go Plus for, to write Go code in Adam. So you download and, and turn that in. And Dan, you can take it from here. Dude, that was WebStorm in four minutes. Yeah. Am I recording? Did I forget to hit record? I think you're recording. Okay, good. That would have sucked. All right. Yeah. Tell us about so, Adam. So uh, Adam's really nice because that Go Plus plugin is uh, it hits all the uh, Go tools automatically um, whenever you hit save. So whenever you uh, hit, whenever like for WebStorm you have to go and hit the format cut button, it does that automatically when you save. Um, so I really like that. So uh, That is nice about Adam. Yes, um, the Go Plus plugin will also automatically detect things like what imports you need. If you forgot to import format or something, it will automatically put that in for you. Um, WebStorm so, does the Im imports, but not the format. And it used uh, to be buggy in WebStorm, the imports, but the okay. format you got to run manually. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, these are the packages I like on my uh, my Atom. So Go Plus, obviously, great, much better than Atom's deep built-in Go uh, support. Um, Auto hide tree view that'll hide the uh, this part here on the left um, will be hidden it, until you just move your cursor over to there, so you got more space for your actual code. Um, Emmet great tool for HTML and CSS, uh, and then file icons because the, by default it'll just be like files and folders, whereas now I've got like the Go Gopher or like the app YAML has got the disks and HTML stuff, has got the shield and such, JS, which is a lot easier to tell what each file type is. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so that's, uh, that's editors. Anybody have any questions? No, it, it, it's uh, it's. I got it. Yeah, oh, here, if you want to yeah, launch yeah. It. No, it's no. Um, yeah, you just you open up settings, you hit install, and you search for it. Okay, cool. So. Hey, and it's in the slide, right? Yeah, these are all these are all the slides. Any other questions? Thanks. All right, Q. Maybe I want to get you guys writing code, so let's do hello world. And, uh, and then you'll be able to write at least some little program. And this actually, uh, to do Hello World, um, let me start a new video. <laughs>